Hi again everyone. In this simple video we're going to discuss Taylor polynomial approximations involving functions of two variables. Now, in first year you would have seen Taylor polynomials for functions of one variable and hopefully you can remember that Taylor polynomials are a very simple and useful way of approximating complicated functions. Now, when we have functions of two or more variables, we can define and use Taylor polynomial approximations. And in particular, their structure, their polynomial structure, make them easy to work with in the sense that they're easy to um, compute with. So essentially what, what we're doing there is taking a very difficult function and approximating it by a simple polynomial. But let's see how this can be done. Let's build our intuition a little bit. Have a look at the following example. Using an appropriate Taylor polynomial, compute an approximation to this value here. Now, firstly, we're asked to compute an, an approximation to this, but we're not told to um, compute it to within any specified accuracy. So that kind of leaves the question a little bit open. But what I'm going to do is put this in a slightly more general context and define a function based on the structure of what we want to approximate. So defining f in this way, what we would like to do, we wish to approximate f of 1.02 comma 1.97. Now because we're not given any specified degree of accuracy for this approximation, the first thing you can do is well say okay well 1.02 is nearly 1 and 1.97 is nearly 2 so if I replace with 1 and 2 I'll get square root of 9, 3. However we can do a bit better than that. I'm going to use the most simplest Taylor polynomial approximation. Okay. Now the simplest Taylor, well, the, the simplest and most useful in many cases uh, approximation is the following. Now x naught, y naught is just some point. Now, let me just explain some of the not notation here. x naught, y naught is just, just a point. Here we have the partial derivatives, and these lines with the subscript mean that each of these partial derivatives are evaluated at this point, and they're just multiplied by x minus x naught and y minus y naught respectively. Now, this right-hand side is known as the linear Taylor polynomial approximation. So, two f about the point x naught y naught. Okay, so basically, what this expression says is that for all x points and y points close to x naught and y naught f of x comma y is approximately equal to this right hand side. So we can use that information now to approximate this. Okay, so the first thing I would like to do is to choose x naught and y naught such that this right hand side is, is simple and the calculations involved are simple. So if I look here, well 1.02 is almost equal to 1, it's approximate, well it, it's close to 1 and 1.97 is close to 2. So I'm going to make a choice.
Now, if I look at the difference between x0 and 1.02 and y0 and 1.97, then I see that there's a small difference between the two that I'm going to denote by delta x and delta y, respectively. Okay, so what I'm going to do now for x equals 1.02, and this is just this plus this, and y equals 1.97, which is this plus this, I can take that and substitute in here. Okay. So over here we're going to have the following. Okay, f of x0, y0 is just going to be f of 1, 2. Then move on here and we need to calculate the partial derivative with respect to x from this function here and evaluate it at the point 1 comma 2. So if I calculate the partial derivative holding y fixed and differentiating normally with respect to x then I'm going to have something like this. And x minus x naught, well, that's actually just going to be delta x. So I can just multiply everything by 0 0.02. And then I move on to this, and I calculate the partial derivative with respect to y in this case, similar to what we had here. But um, in this case, we differentiate holding x fixed and differentiate with respect to y. And again, this will just become negative 0.03. So now I've got to clean this up. First of all, I'm going to substitute in x equals 1, uh, sorry, x0 equals 1, y0 equals 2 in here and here, and then I've just got some simple calculations to do. So let's, um, let's see if we can clean this up a bit. So substitution and simplification yields the following. Okay, so this first term is going to be the square root of 9, which is just 3. Over here, we substitute in and we're going to get... 3 on the top and 2 times root 9 down the bottom times 0 0.02 and over here we're going to get something like this just substituting in now just simplifying all of this you'll get 2.95 so let's um, test to see if we're fairly accurate here. We knew at the start that this was going to be something like 3, and I said we can do better than that. We've got this value here, 2.95, so we, we, we're a little bit more precise there. Now if we wanted a greater degree of accuracy, you could use a Taylor polynomial up to and including the quadratic terms. But let's actually look at the bigger picture here. The Taylor polynomial up to and including linear terms is usually a good starting approximation unless a greater degree of accuracy is required. And you may think, what's the uh, geometric significance of these Taylor polynomial approximations? Well, basically what we're doing is um, think of the graph of a function of two variables being a surface. What we're doing is when we use the Taylor polynomial approximation, we're approximating the surface 
by a tangent plane. Okay, now, it's important that you learn by doing. Here I've given you an example. Using an, appro uh, an appropriate Taylor polynomial, compute an approximation to this value here. The solution method is very similar to the um, example that I've just presented.